Hello everyone! Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Welcome again to our morning prayer and worship. This is a great day to worship God. In Psalm 111 verses 2 to 5, let me read it to you. In verse 2, it says, Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is His work, and His righteousness endures forever. He has caused His wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear Him. He remembers His covenant forever. Let us remember His goodness and declare who He is in our lives as we worship Him today. Search my heart and make it yours. Surrender to your will, guided by your grace, enduring to see. Savior, lover of my soul, your sacrifice be. Search my heart and make it your surrender to your will, guided by your grace, during to see. Say 
on me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, send me for your glory. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord, mold me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, send me for your glory. music team. Now let us come again together as we unite in prayer and pray for healing for our nations. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace today and we are mindful of your ancient promise to pour out your spirit on all flesh. Although this promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, History bears witness to the fact that countless times, through fresh outpourings of your spirit, you have revived your church and saved the lost. Our economies have been impacted by this pandemic, and our nations have been shaken. Yet there is great promise hidden in this pain, because the nations of the world have been ripened for harvest. Like we see in the book of Joel, we ask for revival and harvest to come through a fresh outpouring of your spirit. Lord Jesus, we cry out for your church to be revived and for millions to be saved. Today, we stand in awe of your care for the peoples of the world, for it is an all-encompassing loving care that extends to the spiritual, emotional, relational, physical, and material needs of every human on our planet. Knowing that your omniscient eye misses nothing, we ask you to heal those who have been afflicted with COVID-19 and comfort the hearts of those who have suffered loss. Lord, we boldly come before your throne today asking you to eradicate COVID-19 from the earth and to heal our nations from the ravages of this pandemic. We ask for a spiritual awakening in the nations of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So now we will continue with our Proverbs series. And it's going to be Proverbs 29 for today. And the verse I want to focus on is on Proverbs 29, verse 25. In verse 25, it says, The fear of man brings a snare, but he who trusts in the Lord will be exalted. As we look into this verse, we are going to try to answer three questions. The first question we want to answer is, what is the fear of man? Second, why is the fear of man dangerous? And third, how do you overcome the fear of man? 
What is the fear of man? When we say fear of man, does that mean that um, we are not going to socialize? Does that mean that we're not going out? That we won't meet people? That we're going to be isolated? No, that's not the kind of fear we are talking about here. But fear from this verse comes from the Hebrew word which literally means terror. It's the kind of fear that controls us. It's the kind of fear that paralyzes us. It's the kind of fear that causes anxiety and panic. Have you ever been afraid? Have you ever been crippled by fear? I remember one time uh, when I was still single, I was living with my mom. And around 3.30 in the morning, there were a few men who broke into our house. We were in the second floor and we could hear the men whispering and, and stealing all our stuff downstairs. And thoughts were racing through my mind during the time, whether to scream, to ask for help, or to turn on the lights, or to make a noise. But I was just so afraid during the time that I, would, I was not able to do all that. I just froze. But here, we all know that fear is a natural feeling, and it is common. In fact, everyone has experienced it. It just differs in intensity. But in this verse, when we say fear of man, it's the kind of fear where our actions, our behavior, our thoughts, our directions are all dictated and controlled by what men think and say. It is a man-pleasing attitude. The second question we want to answer is, why is the fear of man dangerous? This verse clearly warns us about the danger of fear of man. It says here, the fear of man, it brings a snare. What is a snare? In hunting, uh, a snare is a trap to catch birds and animals. You have to have a lure or a bait that is very enticing to lead animals into it. As you can see here, this is a picture of a mouse trap. The mouse is being led inside the cage because of the cheese. Cheese is attractive, it smells good, and it looks good. But little did it know that it is being, this mouse is being lured to its death. So we can see here that a snare is deceptively attractive. It's a trick by which one is entangled in unexpected danger, trouble, perplexities, or difficulties. In the same way, praises of men, affirmation from men, recognition of men, they are all very appealing. Being popular, being important, or being part of the in-group, these are all very enticing. The number of subscribers in our YouTube, the number of followers in our Instagram and in our Twitter, the number of likes in our Facebook, these are all very attractive. Now, the verb bring here, it connotes an ongoing action. So the verse can be read this way, the fear of man constantly brings a bait for you to be entrapped in nature. Every time we do something out of fear of man, we are um, bringing troubles upon ourselves. In the Bible, in 1 Samuel 15, King Saul, King Saul was the first king of Israel. And as part of their jobs, they had to lead their army into battle. But during this specific battle, the Lord has a specific instruction for Saul, which he conveyed through prophet Samuel. And the Lord said, you are to destroy everything. You are to destroy all the plunder. You are to strike the Amalek and devote everything to destruction. But apparently, when Samuel met Saul after the battle, King Saul did not destroy everything. He spared some animals for him and for his men. I know you may say that this is a pretty minor offense, but you know what? What made it serious is the motivation behind the disobedience. So when prophet Samuel confronted King Saul, here was King Saul's response. First Samuel verse 15, chapter 15, verse 24, he says, I have sinned, I have transgressed against the commandment of the Lord and your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. In another translation, it says, I was afraid of the men, and so I gave in to them. Another translation, it says, I cared more about pleasing the people 
I, I let them tell me what to do. Afterwards, before Samuel left, King Saul had one request. King Saul pleaded with Samuel to stay, and he had one request. And what was the request of King Saul? Verse 30, Saul replied, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. Verse 35, and the Lord was sorry he had ever made Saul king of Israel. It is just so sad that the main motivation of King, of king Saul's life was the fear of man. Um, he, even after being confronted with his sin, um, he was more concerned about the honor, being honored before his men more than seeking God's honor and God's approval. The fear of man led to his disobedience that caused the Lord's grief. And consequently, he lost his throne as the king of Israel. We can see here from the life of Saul that the fear of man is very destructive. But the good news is there is a way to overcome fear of man, which leads us to the third question. The third question we will answer is, how do you overcome fear of man? The fear of man brings a snare, but those who trust in the Lord will be exalted. The conjunction but here shows a contrast, which means that the antidote to fear of man is trusting in the Lord. Trust literally means to rest on with all one's weight, trusting in the Lord. We can rest all our weight in God, the weight of stress, the weight of fear, the weight of anxiety and panic. We can all give it to God. I also want to emphasize the word Lord, trusting in the Lord. To trust in the Lord means that we're not just trusting an ordinary man. We are trusting a sovereign Lord over, uh, uh, we are trusting someone who is sovereign over all creation. We are trusting someone who is powerful, who is great. We are trusting the all-sufficient one. We are trusting a God who is limitless, the God who can cause things to happen. We are trusting the God who can cause signs and wonders and miracles. And we can completely trust him because he is faithful. He can and he will. And he is more than able to deliver all his promises. And not only that, he is also very much willing to give himself away, especially for those who trust him. Another word that's interesting here is the word exalted. Those who trust in the Lord will be exalted. What does exalted mean? Exalted here means that it is a lofty refuge. It is so high that it is inaccessible. Therefore, it is beyond the reach of attackers. It is beyond the reach of danger. Exalted also means that it is an impregnable fortress where it cannot be captured and cannot be broken into. So when we trust God, God brings us to a place of safety where fear could not defeat us. We can enjoy maximum safety, peace, and security. And this is a rare treasure that money could not buy, especially during this time of pandemic and global crisis, that we can truly experience peace and safety if we are willing to trust in the Lord. Can you imagine you are in a place where you are untouched by danger? You are in a place where you are untouched by worry or by fear. And we all want to be in that place. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6, it says, So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Also, trusting in the Lord and fear of the Lord are the same thing. We trust someone we revere, and we trust someone that we know. Another antidote to the fear of man is the fear of the Lord. And there are so many misconceptions about the fear of the Lord. And one of them is um, others see fear of God as, as, as a fear of punishment. Others see fear of God as an image of God who is insensitive, domineering, or a dictator. But that is not what fear of God is. Fear of the Lord is having that sense of awe and reverence for God and for who He is. The moment we experience who God is 
And the moment we encounter His presence, His power, His holiness, His glory, His transcendence, His love, His goodness, the moment we encounter God, it evokes in us that fear and reverence that would cause us to bow down to Him, that would cause us to fall down on our knees and bow down to His Lordship and to His greatness. This is the kind of fear that acknowledges that He is the Almighty God. This is the kind of fear that reveres God more than men. This encounter with God produces in us that fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is a healthy kind of fear because it reveres God's feelings, God's thoughts, God's opinions above others. Because the moment we encounter God, everything else becomes a blur. And the only thing that's conspicuous and the only thing that stands out is God. The only thing that is really attractive is God's approval. For some of you, you know exactly what God wants you to do. But the fear of what your boss would say or what your friends would do or how your social media friends would react has stopped you or hindered you from obeying God. Always remember that as you fear God, He will keep you safe. He will keep you safe from fear, from the fear of man. To overcome fear of man, we need to consistently choose to fear God and trust Him at all times. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, it says here, Now here is the conclusion of the matter. All has been heard. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Let us pray. Father, forgive us for the many times we valued men's opinions and feelings more than yours. We valued men's opinions and feelings more than your word. And so today we ask you, God, we ask for your strength and we ask for your grace as we choose to revere you, please you, and love you above all else. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's worship again and let's continue to draw near to God. Here I am, Lord, mold me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, send me for your glory. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord, mold me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord, send me. Let me bless everyone as we end. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.